Okay, we're talking about Hobo Mock, which is the sleeping giant, which is on the campus of Quinnipiac College. And I will show you that was really, truly a giant. Okay, what I want you to look at is this is the guy's head, this is the chest, and these are the ribs. And underneath here is the fleshy basalt, and it turns into trap rock. It's excellent trap rock. And this is the ribs actually hanging over. They tried to mine this out of here, but I guess the people living there didn't want them to do it anymore. So anyway, the, but it has the ribs hanging over, left over, just like the one I'm going to show you right now. Actually, look at this a little closer. Look at these ribs. You see this? This is just a shadow from the overhang. This is a different material here. You see this? And that could actually be some blood right there. And this, these are the ribs. As far as I can tell. You see him? That's where he is. And Quinnipiac College and Yale is right down the road. I, I would think they'd want to take a look at this. This is ancient history. This was well recorded by the local tribes. See, this is basically what, the, this is a statue that's in Egypt somewhere, Brian Forrester had it on, and it's about 20, 25 feet tall, something like that. And it was very well, you know, it was like a regular statue. But when it weathered, he says very strange weather, and yes, whoops, can you see that? No. <laughs> that's what he wrote, what, very strange weather, and yes, well it is. Because this is the guy's lung right here. And they were taking that lung out because it was perfect trap rock. And here's the guy's ribs. And a, a, a coating around them was all, and it had hieroglyphics on it and all that stuff. You know, like do you see the statues standing up. This was a statue at one time. But it was just a coated body of a, I don't know what, of, of, of a giant. You see this? Even these, these are tendon fibers. And the tendon fibers are also considered trap rock, you see it? And trap rock can be any kind of body tissue that solidifies under certain conditions. And I am in central Connecticut, 20 miles away from where they are. All of my stuff created the same kind of trap rock. That is, that's, this is a goose. And that's his feathers pattern right there. All body parts are, co are coated with collagen, which is a membrane, and all collagens are stabilized by aluminum silicates, and they become what they call feldspar. That's a bone, solidified in the same mud fossil manner. Inside is, is the um, basalt. It's basalt. Anywhere where there was red fleshy tissue or red meat or anything like that, where it had a lot of blood, turned into basalt. That's basalt now. That's not just nothing. That's basalt. It's the same thing that they were mining at, they were mining down at um, Sleeping Giant. Alright, this was like an arm or a leg or something, and they get flat like this because in the flood, they all soaked and there's something called nucleophilic substitution and invasion, which all this aqueous things formed and they went in and stabilized the tissue so it didn't rot. Now you can see some bloody stuff. This is where the bone was, right in the center here. Now I am going to put a little moisture on there, you see. And you see the edges around there? You see that? Well, it's getting blurry there. But this right here is the membrane, which is nothing more than in, on, a, on your arm and your leg and so forth, it's just a layer of, of tissues that separates the rest of the world from your gooey parts inside. Now I'm going to put some moisture on there, and, and normally moisture makes a lot come out a lot cooler. Now, let me just see. See, sometimes different lighting sources give you different effects. You can see actually the red blood pattern here, where this must have been muscle, or probably, and this was the fleshy area where the bone was in the center. Let me put a little water on here. 
All right, this is what happens is the basalt forms inside because that's the bloody stuff. This is the felspar, which is nothing more than a layer of leather or skin or, or membrane. Now, again, the reason these are all flat was there was a flood. They all laid flat. The, the fleshy stuff, most of it, cooked off. And what was left was of heavily coated membranes and leather and so forth, the coated things that were heavily coated with a, a heavy, thick membrane. Everything else boiled off into flesh and turned into mud. You see how flat that is? That's not an accident. This was CAT scan DNA tested. It's human. And there's the little lock that latched it in, that little flap there. That's called the spur lock. I named it. <laughs> now, there's a, this is another one. It's totally flat. That, that's what happens. They, they get flat on this side, flat, flat, pushed. You know, it's just amazing how flat these things were. But that was some form of a bone or, or uh, an arm or a leg or something at one point, I believe. Now, this, no question to me, this was a goose or some waterfowl or a bird or something. That's the feathers on the top of its head. It has a certain look of a goose to me. And again, the other side, instead of having the eye and all that and the feathers and everything, it's flat. It's because it was in the flood after it died. Now, inside is the basalt. That's where the basalt is. Because there was blood and, and fleshy stuff in here. That's where the artery was. I, I looked at this very closely. And that's where the neck was, right there. When he died, it snapped off, and the neck would have come down this way. Now, that's what trap rock is. Now, mud fossils are extremely specific to the local area. This is 20 miles from that. It's exactly identical rock formations. And so I know, I've, I've already studied everything that's going to be right down there. And they should go in and take a look at it. I mean, that those are colleges, those are institutions. Yale and Quinnipiac, those are supposed to be highly regarded. I would think they would look into this. And I've been trying to get them to do it, well, for a long time. This is why nobody will look into it. Because it leads to religious texts and the ancient giants and monsters and dragons. And this is all, actually, as far as I can determine, this is basically all fact. I've been trying to understand all this stuff. This is from the Gnostic Library, which is, this is the Nag Hammadi Library. It was only discovered in 1945. It's been hidden for 2,000 years. What I'm disclosing to you, nobody's known for 2,000 years. All right, we're going to need somebody with a drone. This is the giant down in New Haven or Hampton. Here's his head. There's the chest. And here's all the ribs. Now, what we need is somebody with a, a nice drone that can do the job and get down here and look at these ribs. These, you see these just different colored things? That's because those are ribs. And down here, there's a spot where there might be blood. All right, come, but this is what I need. Somebody to come up here with a drone. Get up here and look at all of this stuff because it's right here is where there might be some blood. But these strips coming down here, these are the ribs. And it's cut from underneath. And the reason is, is they were mining basalt, which is the lungs. And they, they dug it out from underneath his ribs. So if somebody in New Haven area has a drone and would like to participate and go and, and check this out, I would love to see what the actual material is up here. All right, thank you.